advancing ahead of the main Space Wall's lines, guarding flanks of larger formations, and hunting down enemy infiltrators. When battle is joined, they conduct lightning-fast hit-and-run attacks on defended positions and run down those who would try to escape the vengeance of the pack. Primaris Space Marines on great big motorbikes? I'll have me some of that. Hello, welcome to this edition of Midlife Crisis. So today I thought I'd take a look at the Space Marine Primaris Outriders that came as part of the Indomitus set. Quite looking forward to having a go at these actually. It's been a very long time since I've painted any uh, bike units. Looking at the sprues on these, again, as a majority of the sprues are in the uh, Indomitus set, these are all monopose, so only really one way to put them together, but there's some really nice little details on these. And as always, let's put on those tunes as we snip these sprues. been quite looking forward to getting stuck into these outriders. Previously I painted um, a Ravenwing detachment for an old Archangel's army but I had many 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 more to go and to be perfectly honest I was really disappointed with the finished results. I've probably still got them dusting away in a box in the loft somewhere but I think that's probably where they're likely to stay. So initially when I thought I would paint these up, I was going to add them to my Space Wolves army. And I actually thought that all bike units within Space Wolves were going to be uh, referred to as Swift Claws. According to the new Codex supplement Space Wolves, they're actually still just referred to as Primaris Outriders. As I go ahead through this video, I may accidentally refer them to Swift Claws, but yeah, under Space Wolf law, they'll just be... Uh, yeah, I think they'll always be swift clothes for me. Got the finished models together, they're really, really nice. Lots of detail as everything has been in this Indomitus set. I think what I'm going to do is separate these out. Probably paint the uh, main bike chassis as a sub-assembly, then do the fairing and then finish off with the riders. I think I'd like to get some really nice detail on this. I'm probably going to take the detailing a bit further than I normally would for Battle Ready Marines. Just because I've been really looking forward to this, uh, to painting up this unit. Rather than watching me uh, struggle to take apart plastic toys. Let's pop them into the back garden and get the old grey primer out. So, sprayed them up and yeah, like I said, I stripped them back for sub-assembly. To make sure that I keep track of which rider goes with which bike, I bagged them all up and numbered the base. I learned a very uh, valuable lesson with some of the Necron Warriors when I did the second set of Necron Warriors where I just cut everything out and then couldn't work out which model each set of arms went with, which turned out to be a bit of a nightmare start off I uh, just wanted to get all the uh, bits of chassis that were behind armor panels painted with Abaddon Black and I also uh, painted up all the tires with all the black detailing painted in it was time to crack out the lead belcher and pick out all the different metallic parts on the bike uh, this included some of the exposed mechanics and also the rims of the wheels with all the silver work painted in, I switched to the bike seat. I got out the Rhinox hide and coated the seat. I wanted to give an aged leather look. After all, when you're riding a hog, you, uh, you want the best quality leather strapped across your saddle. Now with all that surrounding detail done, it was time to switch to the first base coat. Now over the years I've tried many different ways of painting Space Wolves. I've come to a method that I use for all of these days, which is to start off with a base coat of the fang. Use it actually as an undercoat as opposed to a sort of finished base coat. So I started off, uh, yeah, as I do with all my Space Wolf models, with the, uh, the layer of the fang. With that done, I gave the whole miniature a good coating of melon oil wash across basically all the parts of the chassis of the bike. 
might seem a bit strange to do a uh, do a wash like this over an undercoat as we're going to be layering over the top of the fan. But what I find is that the um, yeah the recess shading that the non oil will give us will actually create darker areas within those recesses and mean that we don't have to go back and try and shade again later on. It's it's a bit of a quick and dirty way of doing it, but it leaves quite a nice sort of grim looking grimy. Uh, finish to the overall model. After all, these are space wolves riding motorbikes into battle. They're not uh, me and my boomer mates having a ride out on a Sunday afternoon. With that all done, um, yeah, one of the important things with these washes is to give them enough time to dry. My tendency is to dive straight on, just literally carry on, but I find that when you give it a heavy wash, it's often best to give it a couple of hours to, to dry thoroughly. So, following a bit of Doctor Who on the old TV, it was, uh, yeah, time to start putting in that layer of rust grey to give that much lighter blue-grey finish that is indicative of Space Wolves. I just wanted to do a bit of edge highlighting at this point and I switched back to Rhinox Hide to put some uh, some light edge highlighting on the actual bite seat. So using Mechanica's standard grey I started doing an edge highlight around the altar. I also used it just on the very corners of the seat. I find that the Rhinox Hide into the Mechanica standard grey uh, gives a really nice sort of worn look on the leather. As a final highlight, I switched over to Venridian Grey, which is a much lighter grey even than the rust. Still got that blue tinge to it and just did an edge highlight across all the armour panels. And looking back on this, I did every single armour panel on the bike, which if I'd have actually stopped and thought about it a little bit, a lot of these are going to be covered up by the fairing further on as we work through the model. The final highlight that I just wanted to do on the main chassis before I started work on the fairing was just on some of the areas that we painted with the lead belcher, specifically on the back of the grab rails and on the wheel arches as well. And I just tried to pick out the areas on there that would be reflecting the most sunlight. One bit of detail that I noticed on the bike were the headlights. I wanted to try to have those actually lit to try and put some form of glow effect on there. I started off by just picking out the raised areas on the headlights with Corax white. And to actually have that light effect, I used Cassandora yellow, I think that's the right way to pronounce it. Cassandora yellow shade paint to give them sort of a yellow orange effect. And just really hoping that this is going to be sort of visible enough to see it, but subtle enough that it's not going to be crazy looking. Another bit of detail that I wanted to do was in front of the handlebars there was what looks sort of like a little screen that's going to have all the targeting sensors. Just as an experiment, wanted to put some glows in there, so I used initially Caliban Green to paint those areas. I used a Tesseract Glow to put some screens on there. The effects actually I think look quite nice on the bikes, but unfortunately we're almost completely covered by the handlebars. Another failure of spending ages doing detail that nobody's ever going to see. Oh well. Time to move on to the handlebars. I started off by using the Fang to just sort of cover up all the panelled areas in line with the rest of the bike. So I then switched to Abaddon Black to paint in the grips and bar ends of the bike. Used my little vice tool on this just to hold it because I was finding such small little pieces uh, in my big clumsy fingers I was ending up rubbing the paint off as fast as I was putting it on. So once the handlebars and bar ends were painted I just covered the remaining bits of detail with lead belcher. With all the base coats down on the handlebars, I gave the whole thing a wash with Nuln Oil again and it was time to break out Rust Grey to start putting that initial lay on. When that was dry, I wanted to pick out some of the little control panels on the bike using some yellow, some red and some blue. I just touched some of those buttons and switches up to uh, just to give a bit of variety on that uh, on my console. So just to give it a bit of an edge highlight before it had its final mounting on the bike, I used Mechanica Standard Grey across the bar ends and stuff on the handlebars, and also used Fenrisian Grey to highlight the panels. 
and there we have the handlebars now added to the model as you can see completely covering up the low effect that I did on the screen never mind it was, uh, <laughs> it was a nice try with the chassis complete it was time to move on to the fairings quite a lot of uh, large areas of armour on here so it was back to the same method as I used on the main chassis which was starting with the layer of the fan I started off by coating the exhaust manifolds and also working on the legs that were attached on each side of the fairing uh, I did eventually join up with the rider I painted the inside of the exhausts uh, sort of rear exhaust manifold with Corvus Black to give a nice sort of sooty look a lot of this is hidden but if you look from certain angles you can see it so yeah lots of little detail that only I'll know ever know is there but it's still satisfying nonetheless to have it all done I gave the exhaust a coat and a blood belt um, after that I started doing the non oil wash across the armor panels and the uh, lead belt shirt. I wanted quite a thick coat so I uh, I used it straight from the pot and there's a reason why it's best to use it from uh, from a pallet because that's when it gets thrown everywhere and half a bottle of <laughs> non oil goes straight over the desk oh well that's so easy to... <laughs> yeah actually using my uh, my cutting mat now as a palette to uh, make sure I get the best of, get as much of that null oil up as I can. With that rather messy null oil wash complete, I finished up the armour with rust grey and gave it an edge highlight with Fenrisian grey. When I actually cut these together onto the bike, I found that they didn't quite meet exactly. So I used a bit of liquid green stuff to just fill in the gaps it didn't quite fit first of all then with a wet brush just smoothed it down so that it didn't obscure any detail or look lumpy on there. I realised after painting in the main panel that I also needed to give it a quick coat of leg belt around the chassis. Looks like these are the uh, sort of hints of the bolt feeds going into the twin bolters on the front and just picked out a couple of the other little bits just to give a bit of variation. And with that paint again, it was time to give the whole thing with no oil, this time using my palette, not straight from the pot, and then below that up with the usual layer of rust grey, followed by an edge highlight of Henry's new grey. With the armour panels completed, I moved on to paint some of the, uh, the other details on the rider's torso. I wanted to pick out various packs and things on there, so using Lord Van Brown as base coat, I picked out those different pouches and also the, uh, the casing for the old pistol that the riders carry. And I just gave all those leather areas just a coating of uh, Grex Earth shade. Yeah, picks up the detail quite nicely. So with the bikes complete, it was time to move on to the riders themselves. I started off by giving them the same armour treatment that I'd used on the bikes, which was the fang followed by a non oil wash, followed by a rust grey layer. With all the armour painted up, it was time to start on the shoulder pads. I used Avalon Sunset to give the base coat. I found that I have to water this down, but it's quite thick, but doesn't give very good coverage. I think I probably had to use about three or four coats of this to actually get a good smooth layer. Next up, using Abaddon Black, I painted in all the joints in the armor panels between the arms. Also went back to the check for legs to make sure they would all been painted in. I also used Abaddon Black to paint in the engine mountings on the chain swords and also the gun casings on the bolt pistols. I also took this opportunity as well to highlight the eye lenses on the two riders which had helmets on in preparation for painting those in later. Using lead belcher I then picked out the teeth on all the chain swords and also on the sergeant's bolt pistol. Uh, I just picked out the silver detailing on there. I also picked out any silver areas that were on the power packs and just took a general check over the rest of the model to make sure I caught everything at this point. Moving on to the gold detailing, I used Retributor armor to paint in the Aquila. Also took a look over for any um, campaign markings, runner markings, there was the gold Indomitus Crusade campaign badge on the sleeves, so also made sure that that got neatly painted in gold. 
I went over all the gold work with right hand flash shade as a wash and then picked out some of the rose detail again with attributor armour just to really put a highlight on that gold detailing. Next up it was to have a look at the pack markings on the right hand pauldron carefully using the fist in red. I pre-handed the pack markings on worth spending a bit of time doing this and each unit has its own individual pack markings so for me it was important to take a look at the, uh, the rest of the units in the army to make sure that this uh, pack marking was individual for this outrider unit. With those pack markings done, I then cracked out the Stormhaste Silver to give a highlight on all of the silver work. Just picking out the very tips of each of the teeth on the chain sword. Also went back and had a look over the chassis, put some highlights onto the exhausts and any other metal work that was on the, uh, the miniature. Back to the never ending edge highlighting and time to go with all of the armour now using Fenrisian grey, same as we've done across the actual chassis of the bike. Yeah, I wouldn't normally highlight rank and file troops to this level, but I think, like I said at the beginning of this video, I've been really looking forward to painting these miniatures and just really wanted to spend that extra time on it just to give that a little bit of extra detail. The two standard riders are now complete. I'm really liking the way these are looking now. Oh, no, they're not complete. Purity seals. <laughs> Always forget these. Damn you. Okay, well, moving on to our sergeant. Using the codex, I've generated a name for him, so this will now be Olaf Stormcrow. As Space Wolf is going to be riding Helmet off. And I started off by giving the face a base coat of back half flesh and then followed it up with a wash of uh, Reichland flesh shade. I went back to the Rakar flesh once that shade had dried and just wanted to pick out all the raised areas on the face using one of the uh, really fine detail brushes to capture all that detail. I just added a little bit of white and built up the lighter layers on the high points on the nose, on the eyebrows. Also tried to pick out the little creases in his forehead, the little worry lines. My nemesis, the eyes. I started off by trying to pick out the eyes with Corax White, which I actually managed to get that right first time, which I was quite happy with, and then went in with the Abaddon Black to put a small dot for the pupil, and as I always do, ended up splattering it all over. So, probably took me about three attempts. Didn't want to do any more than three because I was starting to lose some of the detail on that, so I just left them as they are. So back to those wax purity seals, I started off by using Screamer Pink on the actual wax and then Wraith Bone on the parchment paper. I then added a wash using Drucci Violet on the wax as part of the purity seals and Seraphin Sepia on the parchment itself. I spent a lot more time working on purity seals. If you look back at my video on the Wolf Priest, that thing was absolutely covered in them. <laughs> it took me hours to do, so that video has got a lot more detail on painting these purity seals. The only thing I had to do was to put the great company markings onto the left hand pauldron. All my space walls are part of the Red North Black Mains great company. The way that I put on transfers, uh, start off by giving it a layer of the City Door Art Coat. The reason for this is it just gives it a really uh, sort of gloss finish, very smooth finish and it just makes it a bit easier to move a transfer about to get it into the right place. It's important that you give the art coat time to dry, I normally like to give it 3 or 4 hours so it is absolutely solid. In the past my temptation has been to go on to this stage too quickly and uh, it ends up making my own mess so patience is the key with this bit. I've got a Space Wolves transfer sheet and cut out the relevant pack markings using a little hobby knife. I think uh, for anyone watching in the US you tend to call these exacto knives. So we pop that transfer in a bit of warm water to float that off and I also just put a bit of water on the actual surface. Um, this just helps to position the transfer correctly before it dries. 
So with all our uh, company markings added, I gave another coat of hard coat over the top and this just helps to protect the transfer. I didn't use the hard coat and then get really annoyed that they'd scratch off with vein use. So, uh, so yeah, it's worth doing this extra stuff because it just, just protects it and uh, you don't end up with a half a wolf's head on the side of your, your miniature. I want to map this back down again so that it matches the rest of the miniature. Normally how I do this is give it two or three coats of city to line and medium. This is basically acrylic paint with no pigment in it, so I yeah, can just sit on the top of that and mat it right down. Also I wanted to add a little bit of weathering to it, so just put a little bit of Agrax Earth shade over it just to give a bit of dirt and grime. And there we have it, our uh, Base Wolves Outriders uh, now complete. I had lots of fun with this project. It took so much longer than I was expecting to, probably around 20 hours of actual painting. So yeah, I know when I came to edit this video it was uh, crazy long and it's taken at least four times that amount to actually edit it. I really like the way I've got the edge highlighting on this. I think taking the extra time to do all the armor panels has really paid off and definitely feel like these are some of the best miniatures I've ever painted. Still not happy with faces, I feel like I'm getting better with the faces themselves but those eyes, goodness me, they're an absolute nemesis for me. I'm going to have a think about how I approach those before I next do an open faced marine my miniature. One thing that I definitely do differently next time is to take a lot more notice of how the miniatures clip together. So even though I probably still painted it as a sub-assembly, I wouldn't do a whole stack of edge highlighting and layering on parts of the miniature which are not going to be visible. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button. Remember, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, tell your friends, share it, and whatever you're doing, stay safe, and I'll see you next time for some more midlife crisis.